noticing the speed limit, adjusting speed as we come to the exit, slowing down even more as we approach the curve. And I notice a car behind me that illegally crossed their white line. So even though there shouldn't have been any cars to the right of me when I came into this lane change, I had the white car behind me. Hey, it's Jacqueline. And for the next few minutes, we are gonna practice exiting the freeway. There's a couple things I want you to keep in mind when you are planning to exit the freeway. First of all, I want you to have your exit in mind and I want you to track the green freeway exit signs that you'll see posted clearly along the freeway. If you see that your exit is in a quarter mile or half a mile, then you definitely need to be in the right lane so that you can initiate your exit from the right lane if it's a right exit. If your exit isn't for one or two miles, then you might stay in the number two lane, one lane over, in which case you'll wait until you're that half a mile or a quarter mile ahead to make a right lane change to position yourself to exit. If you know that you're going to exit within a couple of miles, there's no reason for you to be any further to the left than the first two miles. Most exits are from the right lane, and so you want to stay to the right so that you can very easily get off the freeway, avoiding any last minute lane changes or decisions. When you're exiting the freeway, it counts as a lane change, so you're going to use your turn signal. You'll check your mirror and blind spot, even though there shouldn't be anyone to the right of you if you're in the right lane. You wanna make sure that there isn't a car coming in the emergency lane, because that happens sometimes. And also, you wanna keep your eyes out for a motorcyclist who is not supposed to be on the right of you, but you just always wanna be aware when you're moving to the right, if there's a hazard on the right side of you. You're also going to let your speed drop once you enter the exit lane. Don't start to slow down while you're on the freeway, unless of course there are slower cars ahead of you. But assuming there are no brake lights ahead of you and you put on your right turn signal, it's important to continue going the speed limit until you get off of the freeway because the cars behind you will be continuing to go the speed limit and you don't wanna slow down and cause an unnecessary hazard in the right lane on the freeway. But once you do enter the exit lane, you want to make sure that you adjust your speed because the exits often lead us to a curve or a short ramp, both of which come to either a stop sign or a stop light. So as you're exiting the freeway, you know that you're reducing your speed likely to come to a full stop. Let's head out on the highway and we'll practice exiting and making sure that we have all of our steps down so we can make safe exits. Now that we're on the highway, let's think about how we would exit. Let's set a goal of exiting at Central Avenue. So while I'm driving, I'm gonna be on the lookout for green freeway signs that show me how far Central Avenue is. I'm staying in the right lane because I wanna see how much time I have until I have to exit. If I have a quarter mile or half a mile or really even up to two miles until my exit, I'm definitely gonna stay in the right lane. But let's say my exit was 10 miles ahead, then I would feel more comfortable to move around the freeway, choosing the lane that was best for me. But right now, this lane is best for me because I'm driving at the flow of traffic, 65 miles an hour, which is what I want. I see that my Central Avenue exit is in one mile. So this is the perfect spot. I'm keeping track in my rear view mirror of cars behind me. I definitely want to use my turn signal to tell people that I'm exiting. And I want to be careful not to slow down because I don't want to interfere with the flow of traffic. 
the closer I get to my exit, the more I'm gonna be thinking about what I have to do on the exit. And there will be caution signs to show me if there's a cautious speed that I have to go. And there might even be picture signs that show me if there's a sharp curve so that I can really be prepared for the road conditions. I immediately see 25 miles an hour, so just like the car ahead of me, I want to slow down as I approach the curve. I never want to go into a curve feeling fast or out of control. I want to hit my speed in the arc of the curve and then accelerate out. So I slow down as I approach and then I accelerate out of the curve. And that corkscrew shape is a common exit shape because it does a really good job of slowing down traffic as it comes to either a stoplight or a stop sign, re-entering more busy environments, let's say, or busier. We're gonna get back on the freeway and then we'll practice another exit. And we're just checking out different exits so we can see what the demands are of the exit and how we can learn to exit safely. In that exit scenario, the important variables we were thinking about were reducing our speed as we approach the curve and then accelerating out of the curve. And because it's a little bit sprinkly, we also want to remember that we have to be more cautious when it's lightly raining because those curves can be slippery. exit and we'll see what this exit has in store signaling to tell everyone we're leaving noticing the speed limit adjusting speed as we come to the exit slowing down even more as we approach the curve we want to reach our safe speed as we approach the curve and then in this case, we're not gonna accelerate out of the curve. We're gonna continue slowing into the stop sign. And because we adjusted our speed first to 30 and then to 20, it was very simple to come to that nice slow stop at the end of the freeway exit. So we went from 65 to a nice stop in a very controlled way. And that's what we're looking for, for our freeway exits. Let's get back on the freeway another time and practice exiting the freeway. Next, we're gonna merge onto the freeway with a little bit more traffic and we're gonna see what it feels like using the left mirror and of course checking our blind spot to merge between cars that are closer together. The rule that we use when traffic is moving quickly is that we have to be able to see both headlights of a vehicle in our rear view mirror. But when traffic is moving slowly and cars are closer together, that's an impossible spot to achieve. So instead we focus on the left mirror and we make sure that cars are slowing down and giving us room. When I look in the left mirror, I see the Toyota approaching and I can tell that they're slowing and giving me room. Only now can I see their headlights in the rear view mirror. So when we're approaching and traffic's moving slowly, 
We merge more slowly, we require less space, and we're allowed to make the merge if we can see both headlights in the left mirror and we can tell that the car is slowing down or holding their space to give us room. As I'm preparing to enter the freeway, I'm thinking about taking my turn and accelerating as quickly as possible. I have a really short merge, so I have to push the gas. I'm trying to match my speed with the flow of traffic. My right thumb holds the wheel and I make a safe left merge. And I still haven't gotten up to the speed of traffic yet. I'm still accelerating with the flow of traffic. So the important thing when you're entering the freeway is to match the speed, whatever it's going. It might be going 31, 51, 61. You just get in there and match safely. I'm looking ahead for my next exit and I wanna get off at Gilman. So I've been tracking the green freeway signs and I know that Gilman is the next exit, but I see a couple lanes to the right of me. Even though I'm in the right lane right now, because another freeway is joining, I'm going to have to make a couple more right lane changes to get to my exit. And I only have a quarter of a mile to do it. So I wanna start soon. I put on my signal and check mirror and blind spot. And because we're moving more slowly, I made my lane change without being able to see the Prius's headlights in the rear view mirror. I was only able to see them in the right mirror. And I can only make that closer, slower lane change if I'm sure that the car is waiting for me and giving me space. Seeing that motorcycle up ahead zipping reminds me of how important it is that I check mirror blind spot whenever I'm making a lane change. And I notice a car behind me that illegally crossed their white line. So even though there shouldn't have been any cars to the right of me when I came into this lane change, I had the white car behind me. So just another reminder of why we always check mirror blind spot on the right, even when we're in the right most lane. And it seems like, why would anybody be there? My exit speed is 45, but I'm only going 34 because the speed of traffic is a bit slower. And I'm going to go right into my stop sign to make a right turn. So in that case, to make my right exit, I had to make a couple lane changes, being really careful that there wasn't anyone to the right of me, even when it seemed like there couldn't be because there was a solid white line and no one should have crossed. So we've experienced a couple different exit situations. And the most important thing about exiting is position yourself in the correct lane. Most often that's the right lane for a right freeway exit, which is the most common type of exit in my community. There are a couple left exits, which is why I'm saying it's the most common type, but it's not the only type. If you're positioned in the right lane for a right exit, you still put on your right turn signal, showing people that you're exiting, and be really careful not to slow down on the freeway. Wait until you're off the freeway to slow down. And when you are slowing down, make sure that you slow down according to the caution signs and the demands of the exit. It could be a curly, twisty cork shape, or it could be a short exit, so you have to come to a slow stop in a short amount of time. I hope that the freeways that you enter and exit are well marked for you and that you have safe freeway driving experiences. Thanks for checking in today. Have a great rest of your day and get some good practice so you can become a good driver. Bye for now.